So in this video, I'm going to be replacing the Wi-Fi card in a laptop. And this is the computer that in a previous video I set up as a home theater PC and wall mounted behind this television. So first I'm going to do a speed test. I'm going to go to speedtest.net and click begin test. And this is with a wireless in Wi-Fi card that's built in and came with the laptop. So the ping time is 3 milliseconds, which is really good. Uh, that's the amount of time in milliseconds it takes for information to go from this computer out to the server on the internet. And the download speed is right around 27 megabits per second, which is not terrible. And the upload speed is going to be around 29 megabits per second. Actually went up to 30. These speeds are fine just for streaming video from YouTube or Netflix, things along those lines, but I also occasionally download files on this computer. So when I do that, the maximum speed I could get would be 27 megabits per second. The thing is, I have a 1000 megabit per second internet connection, so I'd really like to get that speed increased. The laptop is behind the television, and the laptop is about 25 or 30 feet away from the router, which is just on the other side of that wall to the right of the china cabinet. I'm going to go ahead and close that down, and I'm going to get the laptop and take it into the office. And it's just sitting back here on the wall. I'll disconnect the USB hub and the HDMI cable. Disconnect the power from the wall. And take out the laptop. I've already determined the Wi-Fi card I'm going to be replacing the built-in one with. Um, I've got it right here. I already ordered it and it came in. It's an Intel dual band wireless AC 7260 Wi-Fi card with Bluetooth built in as well. So what I'm going to do before I go removing and replacing the internal card, I'm going to download the drivers for the new adapter. I'm going to go to Google and do a search for Intel 7260 driver. So it looks like I should, I should be able to get it from right here. Scroll down. I have Windows 10 running on this computer. So I'll get the drivers for Windows 10. So if I go to Show in Folder, there they are in my Downloads folder. So what I'm going to do is shut down the computer. Close it down and take out the power. Going to take out the battery. And on this computer, like most laptops typically, the Wi-Fi card will be underneath a panel on the bottom of the laptop. In this case, it's one large panel. I'm going to take the screws out. How you go about doing this on your computer really depends. Um, if you do a search on Google for your computer's model number and service manual, if you have an HP, a Dell, or a Lenovo, you'll more than likely find a service manual that shows you how to, uh, to get to the Wi-Fi card. You can also try doing a search for the model number of the computer 
and the word disassembly. And in most cases, oh, I missed a screw. In most cases, you'll find some instructions for how to do this sort of thing. At least how to get to the card. Okay, so this right here is the card. It's got two antennas going to it. And to take these off, really, you just grab the antenna and lift up. You really shouldn't pull uh, against it because this will actually come off. Do the same to the other, just like that. And generally, these are held in with a single with a single screw. I have seen on a few occasions them being held in with a little plastic clip that comes off the uh, the top or the side that you kind of have to push back and it will come up on its own. Just pull it straight out. So, if I look at this, I did this before um, I bought the, uh, the new card. I did a search for the model number. I guess I'll show you this on my diagnostic computer. Show the process I went through. So what I did is I went to do a Google search and I put in the model number that I found on the adapter and it's AR5895 and that's brought up a whole bunch of watches so I'm going to actually put in the name of the card which is Azure Wave. There it is. So basically what I looked for is the type of card this is. And in this case, it is a half mini PCIe card. And from this picture, it's essentially correct. This seems to be one that could also fit into a full height. If I go back and click on images, that's it. So the one in this computer is a PCIe half mini card, generally referred to as half mini. Let me go to this image I put together. So these are the four kinds of wireless cards that you find in most computers these days. This one on the left is called a mini PCI card. And these are mostly found in older laptops, probably the least likely to find in a laptop. But it essentially fits in a slot in a laptop and it has a place for the two antenna cables to go. This one here is called a PCIe full mini card. It's essentially, it's about double the length of the half mini. And electrically, these two are compatible with each other. As long as on the laptop there's enough room to put in a full height card, you could put one in. And if yours comes with a full height card, the chances are very good it will also fit a half mini card. And the half mini is the most common card type found in laptops. Now this next one I've seen a few times here recently in newer laptops and it's called an NGFF M.2 card. So once you know the type of card you have in your laptop you can go on to find a replacement. And while I'm doing this in a laptop this also works in a lot of desktops with built-in Wi-Fi. Very often if you open them up you will find one of these types of cards in a slot on the motherboard and it is upgradable for the most part. Now I say for the most part because there are issues with replacing the built-in Wi-Fi cards on laptops and desktops. If I come in here and do a search on Google for Wi-Fi whitelist, I find a whole bunch of people talking about problems after they replaced their Wi-Fi card with a new one. And it comes down to what's called whitelists. What this is on some laptops and desktops, not all of them, but quite a few, there are whitelists of approved Wi-Fi cards. If you replace the built-in Wi-Fi card with one that's not on the whitelist, the computer won't even boot into Windows. It will just freeze and refuse to go in. And there's not really a very good way around this. There are some pretty in-depth BIOS hacks that you can do. Um, and otherwise, there's a, a few people who have run extra cables between the various components in the computer and the Wi-Fi card 
to get around the whitelist. Basically, I wouldn't recommend doing either of those. What you want to do is find a Wi-Fi card that will work in your laptop. So what, uh, what you can do to, uh, probably the best way to find it, is to put in the model number of your laptop or desktop computer. In my case, it's a MSI MS1681. And you might first do a search for whitelist and see if people are talking about your particular laptop or desktop computer having a whitelist for the Wi-Fi adapters. And on mine, it doesn't look like it does. If your laptop or desktop computer does have a Wi-Fi whitelist that you have to deal with, the next thing I would do is locate a Wi-Fi adapter that you would like to use. So in my case, I did a search online, actually on Amazon.com, for half mini wireless AC. Because I'd like to upgrade the built-in wireless N adapter with a wireless AC adapter. And I found this one here, which is the one that I bought. It's a Intel Dual Band Wireless AC 7260 Wi-Fi Bluetooth Half Mini Card. So once I had the model number I would very much like to use, what I did is I came back and did a search for that model number along with my laptop model. So it's a 7260. And basically I read what people had said and I found that people were able to get the 7260 from Intel to work in my model laptop. So I went ahead and bought it. And that's what I'm going to do. I'm about to replace it. So I already took out the built-in Wi-Fi card. There's nothing wrong with it. I'm going to keep it in case I, I ever need it again for another person's computer. Should work just fine. I'm going to open up. the new card. Basically just reverse the process when going to install it. So it goes down in so it goes down in this little slot down here. It'll go in one way because it has a, a notch in this just slightly off center. Well, quite a bit off center actually. And push it in and angle it down. Screw and put it back in. Now to reattach these, it doesn't matter which one you put on. If you, right now, uh, the gray one is going to the right one and the black one is going to the left one. These are interchangeable, so if you get them, you know, backwards, that's okay. It still works. So, basically, I don't know that this is going to show up on the, uh, in the camera, but it's a very, it's a small circular connection, and it fits into the other end, which is a circle. So it's a matter of basically lining it up so it's in approximately the right spot and then pushing down, and you'll hear it pop in. I'll do the same with the other, just like that. And this has a bit of tape that helps hold it down so the cables don't go rogue. Okay, so that's in. I'm going to go ahead and put back on the cover. These large covers sometimes have to finagle in. Get it all down, yep, and then put the screws in. Okay, put the battery back in. Go ahead and plug in the power. Turn her back on. I'm going to plug in a wireless mouse just to make it easier on myself.
So down by the clock on the Wi-Fi icon, it's got a red X, which makes sense. Uh, what I'm going to do is go to the Device Manager. To get there, I'm going to go to the Start button and right-click, and come up to Device Manager. So under Network Adapters, looks like it picked it up. It's a Intel Dual Band Wireless AC. And so it picked up the adapter, and yet it's not showing that I have any available Wi-Fi because Wi-Fi apparently is turned off. So, um, looks like I need to enable it. And if you have to do this on your computer, it's, uh, it's different for every laptop. In this case, it's holding down Function and pressing the F8 key to enable Wi-Fi. There it is. So I'm going to go to Orb 5G, which is my wireless AC 5G access point, and click Connect, and I'll type in the security key. And that is connected. Now I also had downloaded the latest version of the drivers from Intel, and I'm going to go ahead and install those. Looks like I accidentally downloaded the 32-bit version of the drivers. So, okay. Let's go try that again. So it's an Intel 7260 driver. So I'll go back to the same page. Scroll down here. And it says Windows 32-bit or 64-bit, but it only has one link which I think I clicked on before. Ah, but anyway, down here, this one has Bluetooth technology built in, and this wireless adapter does come with Bluetooth. So let's go ahead and click that. Ah, that's what I did. I clicked the top one. I should have clicked the bottom one on the other. But this is going to get me the Bluetooth as well, so that's good. So I'll accept. Or is this just Bluetooth? Yeah, it's just Bluetooth. Let me go back. Make sure I'm getting the right thing. So I'm going to get this one here, wireless software, and make sure I get the 64-bit. Because I think the deal is this is just Bluetooth, where this should be the wireless and possibly plus Bluetooth. We'll find out. I'm going to install this one. I'm going to agree. I'm going to hit Customize just to see. So wireless software extensions. So it's just talking about wireless. I'm not going to do the admin and installing on that location is fine. Okay, so I'll click Finish. I'm going to go back to the Device Manager and see what I see. So under Network Adapters, and there is some Bluetooth there. I'm going to go ahead and install the Bluetooth drivers from Intel, just to make sure I have the most recent version. Okay, so this is Wireless Bluetooth Setup Wizard. I'm going to have it do complete, just so I don't miss anything. I don't imagine this is going to take up much space anyway. The download was like 9 megabytes. Okay, so we'll do finish. Alright, so... Close that. Looks like I need to get reconnected to the Wi-Fi after the driver update. So I'm going to go to Orb 5G. And it remembered the passcode. So I am now connected. Okay, so let's take this back into the living room. All right, so I'm going to put this back in place. It would help if I actually got it in there. There we go. Try that again. There we go. Okay. So 
So when I took it out, this got disconnected, which is my extension cord going up to the main power here. Plug back in. Plug in the AC adapter. Get it set back up here. Plug back in the HDMI and the USB hub. Push that on back. All right, let's go back into Chrome and we'll do speedtest.net. And I'll begin the test. Wow, okay, four millisecond ping, and the download speed is gonna be around 170-ish megabits per second. Yep, 170, that's, that's a really good improvement. And upload should be similar. Hundred and thirty six megabits per second. Well, that will give me a good speed increase when I'm downloading files. That's great. Okay, so I'm back in the office. Let me go back to this image of the different card types. So chances are you can mostly just follow along with what I just did to upgrade the Wi-Fi card in your computer. Now if it turns out that you have an older laptop that has the mini PCI type of card in it, chances are a laptop this old, the wireless built-in is going to be wireless G or possibly wireless N. Um, the likelihood of finding a wireless AC card in this form factor, the mini PCI form factor, is pretty low. Uh, not, not likely to find a wireless AC just because of the difference in, uh, in time frames. Wireless AC is fairly new. But if you have currently a wireless G Wi-Fi card in your laptop or desktop computer for that matter, the likelihood of you finding a wireless N card is relatively high which would give you a good speed increase going from wireless G to wireless N. And the next three, you, you are very likely to find a wireless AC card to replace a wireless N card that you have currently. But even if you do that, you still have to contend with whitelists. And, you know, for, I know for a lot of people, they don't want to go through the trouble of opening up their laptop, figuring out what kind of card they need, making sure that it, uh, it'll work through the whitelist if there is one and all that. So really the other way to go about this is to get a USB to wireless AC adapter. And in a case of what I just did where the laptop is basically stationary, you don't necessarily need to get a particularly small wireless adapter. So if you have a laptop that you don't actually take anywhere or you need Wi-Fi for a desktop computer which just by its nature you don't take anywhere. What you can do is get one of these external adapters and you can even get one that um, that actually sticks out away from the computer. Some of them will have an antenna that sticks out. Others, if you look enough, this one here, I've used this on several occasions or ones like it. I think this is the yeah, this is the wireless AC version. I've used the wireless end of this quite a bit. So what it is, it's an adapter that sits away from the computer, desktop or laptop, and is connected with a USB cable. And the advantage of this is it gets the antenna and adapter away from the computer, away from interference from other components in the computer, which is a very good thing. I'm actually going to order one of these and see how it does compared to the built-in adapter, speed-wise but I'm going to save that for another video. So that is how you replace the Wi-Fi card in your laptop. You can use the same process to replace the one you have in a desktop computer with Wi-Fi built in. Thanks for watching.